What do you do in your free time? Well, it depends. But I enjoy reading and watching movies on my computer. These two activities are very entertaining and relaxing at the same time. Reading can open the doors to a fantastic world. I especially like fantasy novels like the Harry Potter series. When it comes to movies, I'm a big fan of action films. I like the shooting and the battle scenes. They're always thrilling. In addition, I try to go hiking as often as possible. I am lucky because my hometown is surrounded by mountains, and there are many paths to take uphill. The scenery is quite stunning with forests, waterfalls, and great views. On top of this, it's a good chance to work out. Did you have other hobbies when you were younger? Yes, as a kid, I used to play basketball all the time. I used to be crazy about this sport. I remember when Yao Ming joined the NBA. It was such a big deal, and we would hear about it all the time on TV and on the radio. The national channel showed us a lot of games, and my friends and I would play and pretend we were NBA stars. I don't often play anymore, but I still enjoy watching games occasionally. What does your father do in his free time? My dad likes to watch a lot of TV. He frequently buys DVDs and he watches them late at night when everyone is sleeping. He's extremely busy with his job and he doesn't get much time on his own. So he waits for everyone to go to bed and then he turns on the DVD player. That's the only time when he doesn't need to talk to my mother and my grandmother. During the holidays, he often plays mahjong with friends. They hang out, catch up, and I think they drink quite a bit too. Are these activities popular in your country? You mean watching TV and playing mahjong? Yes, definitely. I think that middle-aged people all around my country love to watch TV, and many men in the south enjoy playing cards or mahjong. It's fun. And at the same time, it's a good chance for people to socialize. If you had more free time, what would you do? I would like to exercise more often. I wish I had more time to play basketball and maybe join the gym to work out. In addition, I wish I could travel more as well. You know how big China is. There are so many stunning places I would like to visit. I'd love to go to Sichuan Province and Tibet. I wish I had more time and money. What would you like to change about your daily routine? I guess I should try to get to bed earlier and get up earlier too. I play computer games late at night sometimes. I should focus on other things. And as I told you, I wish I had more time to exercise on a weekly basis. I would love to try new sports like rock climbing, for example. As a high school student, there isn't much I could do to change my daily routine. I just wish I didn't have so much homework all the time, so that I would have more time to enjoy myself. What is your hobby? Well, as for me, I'm really into outdoor activities. The first reason why I'm so fond of outdoor activities is that it's a great way to release my pressure and give myself a break. In addition to this, I guess it's probably because I feel comfortable and peaceful in the wild. For example, if I have got leisure time, I would prefer to go hiking or go for mountain climbing. Did you have other hobbies when you were younger? For sure, I can vividly remember when I was young, I was keen on watching cartoons. Well, in addition to this, I was also into playing games like hide and seek as well as playing house. You know, the hobbies when I was younger bear no relation to the hobbies today. Frankly speaking, I particularly prefer childhood hobbies. If you had more free time, what would you do? 
supposing that I had more free time, I would love to read a book or go travelling. What I am trying to say is that it's the best way to enjoy myself and I can get relaxed. Furthermore, as long as I had more spare time, I would also enjoy hanging out with my friends or getting together with my family members, as it is of great fun to be with them. How do you relax? Personally speaking, there are many ways I relax and unwind myself. Anyway, what I extremely enjoy doing is swimming, for the reason that I forget all of my worries and troubles in the swimming pool, whenever I feel tired or under great pressure. How do Chinese people relax? Frankly speaking, it varies according to people's age, gender and individual preference. But generally speaking, I guess most of Chinese people are fond of having meals together or chatting with each other. The most important reason for this is that we feel relaxed and delighted when chatting with others and is a kind of Chinese custom. How do Chinese young people differ from the old in their hobbies? I think they are like chalk and cheese, for the young and the old are apparently different in age and lifestyle. As for young people, I believe they are interested in watching movies and playing sports. While in terms of old people in China, I probably guess they are keen on dancing in a square or taking care of their grandchildren. Do you like films? Yes, I enjoy watching films. When I want to relax or have some fun, I like to watch a movie. What kinds of films do you like best? My favourite kinds of films are comedies. I like movies that can make me laugh. How often do you watch films? If there is an interesting movie playing at the cinema, I'll go to see it. It's nice to go out to see a movie with my friends sometimes and get to see it on a big screen. Do you like to watch films alone or with your friends? I'd rather watch films with my friends. We always have a good time together, and afterwards we talk about the movie, whether we enjoyed it or not. Do you prefer to watch films in the cinema or at home? I prefer to watch movies at the cinema, because then you get to see the movie on a big screen, with a better sound system. I think it makes the movie more impressive, you know? Do you like to dance? Yes, I like to dance because I really enjoy moving to the music. What kind of dancing do Chinese people like? Chinese people like to do ballroom dancing, but outside on the street. Young people like to go to discos and dance techno and hip-hop. Does China have any traditional dances? China has a lot of traditional dances. There are as many traditional dances in China as there are ethnic minorities. Is traditional dance still popular today in China? Yes, I think so. Many Chinese young people go to school in order to learn it. It's part of our culture. No, I don't think so. Nowadays, more people prefer modern music and dancing styles. What kinds of dancing are popular? with young people in China. Young people are interested in many forms of dancing here in China. We like to go to clubs and dance to hip-hop and techno music. Do you like to listen to music? Yes, I do. I'll often listen to music on my MP4 when I'm travelling from place to place or when I'm at home relaxing. What kinds of music do you like? I like to listen to love songs, pop music, rock music, traditional Chinese music, jazz, hip-hop, Latin music. What kinds of music are popular in China? Everybody has different tastes, but I think love songs and pop music are the most popular kinds of music in China. Older classics from America and Europe are pretty popular here too. Rap is also getting to be very popular as well. Have you ever learnt to play a musical instrument? 
Yes, when I was in school. I learned to play the violin, but I don't play it anymore, and I think I've forgotten how. Is music an important subject at school in China? Unfortunately, music is not such a popular subject at school in China. Math and science are much more important in China, although maybe not so popular. What benefits do children gain by studying music or learning to play a musical instrument? By learning how to play a musical instrument, children can learn many things. They can learn self-discipline, determination, and how to appreciate music better. Have you ever learned to draw? To tell you the truth, I never really had the time to learn to draw. I also really don't have the talent to spend my time drawing. Do you draw now? Yes, I sometimes like to draw. Not only is it a good form of relaxation, but I enjoy creating beautiful things and using my imagination. Even if I can't draw very well, I still enjoy it. What do you think are some of the benefits of drawing for both children and adults? Both children and adults need to use their creativity. Drawing teaches people to look at the world differently, more carefully and thoroughly. It helps people relax and have fun, and it gives you a chance to use your imagination. Do you like to take photographs? Yes, I like to take photographs. It's great fun. And then afterwards, you can always have the photos and remember the good times you've had. On what occasions do you take photos? Well, usually I take photos when I go out somewhere, to a park or to the beach or to a party. When it's somebody's birthday, spring festival, at graduations or any other important occasion, I take photos. What kind of photos do you like to take? Mostly, I like to take pictures of nature or of beautiful scenery. Also, I like to take silly pictures with my friends. We always laugh a lot and have a good time. Is photography a popular hobby in China? I think so. When Chinese people go out together, they often take photos of each other or of the places they visit. Do Chinese people like to visit photographic exhibitions? You know that I don't really visit photographic exhibitions because they're a little hard to find here in China. There are some, but the content is really not so interesting. Do you collect anything? Sure, I have a collection of postcards from different countries. Why do you collect those things? I collect those things because they are interesting and rare. I like to go over my collection and see all the cool things I've got stored away. Is collecting a popular pastime in China? It used to be, but not any more. Actually, it is a little hard to find things to collect, except for maybe pictures of Chairman Mao on flags or coffee mugs. Do a lot of people in China collect things? And what do they collect? People in China really don't collect too many things. They are pretty busy with the daily run of things and don't have the time or the resources to collect things. What are the benefits of collecting? Well, people like to collect things mostly as a hobby, and hobbies are good to have because they help people to relax and get their minds off their jobs or problems they may have. Okay, here is the part one topic of hobbies. We've got a couple of samples. Let's go with the first one. And the first question is, is... What do you do in your free time? Well, it depends. But I enjoy reading and watching movies on my computer. These two activities are very entertaining and relaxing at the same time. Just one thing I don't quite understand. <laughs> the guy started off by saying, well, it depends. Depends on what? He doesn't continue this idea. He doesn't develop this idea. If you look at the grammar, uh, enjoy V-I-N-G and V-I-N-G, that's pretty good. Um, he doesn't really say 
or maybe he's going to say what movies he watches and what he enjoys reading. I don't know. I haven't heard it so far. Activities are very entertaining and relaxing at the same time. Reading can open the doors to a fantastic world. Okay, so he's talking more about the reasons why. Notice that he talks about the reasons why without saying because. He just says these two activities are very entertaining. Reading can open the door to whatever. Not a bad way to introduce reasons without using the word because. And as far as idiomatic language goes, look at this here. Open the door or open the doors. Great, fantastic. Great, uh, <laughs> what am I saying? Great idiomatic language. Okay, now here finally we get some examples. I see here he's going to talk about Harry Potter. World. I especially like fantasy novels like the Harry Potter series. And just notice that the word is series. Don't confuse series and serious. I hear a lot of people getting those two wrong and mixed up. Like the Harry Potter series. When it comes to movies, I'm a big fan of action films. I like the shooting and the battle scenes. They're always thrilling. Okay, so he started with the reasons. Now he's going into examples, although no names here. He gave us a name when he talked about books. No names here when he's talking about movies. Uh, shooting and battle scenes. Okay, we've got some adjectives here. Thrilling. Uh... Mm, okay, let's go on. Possible. I am lucky because my hometown is surrounded by mountains, and there are many paths to take uphill. Nothing too outstanding here, except maybe the word take. I don't think too many people are going to use the word take with paths. These two words go together well. That's a pretty good collocation. The scenery is quite stunning, with forests waterfalls and great views okay so he's, he's telling us why he's so into going hiking he's talking about the scenery we've got specific words here forests and waterfalls and waterfalls and great views on top of this it's a good chance to work out okay the answer is quite long it looks like it's about 55 seconds <laughs> you don't have to give such long answers did you have other hobbies when you were younger? Yes, as a kid, I used to play basketball all the time. Okay, so when you're talking about the past, used to is a very useful phrase to describe past actions, past habits. I used to be crazy about this sport. I remember when Yao Ming joined the NBA. It was such a big deal, and we would hear about it all the time on TV and on the radio. Okay, so before we saw used to, to talk about past actions, past uh, habits. Here he's using would to describe past habits. We would. So when you're telling a story and you're telling about things that happened in the past, you can also use would to talk about things that happened in the past, things that repeatedly happened. All the time on TV and on the radio. The National Channel showed us a lot of games. The National Channel. I don't know why channel is capitalized there. Let's get rid of that. Uh, showed us a lot of Video. games. The National Channel showed us a lot of games. And my friends and I would play and pretend we were NBA stars. I don't often... Notice the wood here again. Wood, play, and pretend. Play anymore but I still enjoy watching games occasionally. Okay. Error free. I can't really talk about the fluency because the guy is reading, but at least he's not reading as slowly as we saw some other people reading. What does your father do in his free time? Yeah, see, they're never really going to ask you questions like this about specific family members. Because, well... What if your father has passed away and you don't want to talk about that? It's going to be really awkward. So don't expect any specific questions about your mother or your father or anything like that. My dad likes to watch a lot of TV. He frequently buys DVDs and he watches them late at night when everyone is sleeping. 
He's extremely busy with his job, and he doesn't get much time on his own. This is kind of a weird phrase. He doesn't get much time on his own. That's not the right way to say this. The right way to say this is he doesn't get much time for himself. For himself, not on his own. With his job, and he doesn't get much time on his own. Nope. So, he waits for everyone to go to bed, and then he turns on the DVD player. Um, what's some good I can say about this? Well, he consistently uses the present tense correctly. I mean, look at this. He waits, he turns on the DVD player. He is busy, he doesn't get much time, because you're talking about habits, right? So present tense is the tense to use here. That's the only time when he doesn't need to talk to my mother and my grandmother. Kind of weird, but okay. During the holidays, he often plays mahjong with friends. They hang out, catch up, and I think they drink quite a bit too. Now, I don't know why there's no stress here. I mean, if I were saying this, I would say they hang out, upward inflection. They hang out, catch up, and I think they drink quite a bit too. I would put some emphasis on some of the words here. And here, when you're listing things, hang out, go up, catch up, up. And I think they drink quite a bit too, down. So if you're listing things, the first item should be said with an upward inflection, the second one upward inflection, and then at the end, down, to show that you're finished with the list. They hang out, catch up, and I think they drink quite a bit too. He doesn't do that. Are these activities popular in your country? You mean watching TV and playing mahjong? Yeah. Wait a second, that's too many G's. There we go, that's better. I think that middle-aged people all around my country love to watch TV. And many men in the south enjoy playing cards or mahjong. Yeah, okay, what can I say? Again, the only really good thing here is that they consistently use the present tense to talk about habits. It's fun, and at the same time, it's a good chance for people to socialize. Socialize is not a bad word. If you had more free time, what would you do? Okay, would, because we have if, so this is an unreal situation. Let's see if he uses would in his answers as well. I would like to exercise more often. There we go, would, okay. So words like would, um, wish, and here had, because you're talking about unreal things. I wish I had. I wish I had more time to play basketball and maybe join the gym to work out. In addition, we saw in addition <laughs> he used so much. There's nothing wrong with that. You can use in addition if you want to as well. I wish I could travel more as well. You know how big China is. There are so many. Why is there a comma there? You know how big China is. Okay, so here we see would again. There are so many setting places I would like to visit. Um, here, I don't know why he uses the word would. Because I'm assuming he really does want to visit these places. So I think he should have said there are so many setting places I want to visit. Because it expresses how he feels right now. This is not an unreal condition. Stunning places I would like to visit. I'd love to go to Sichuan province and Tibet. I wish I had more time and money. Okay, so here's the difference. This is unreal because he doesn't have more time and money. So I wish I had. But this is real because he does want to visit these places. So not really an accurate usage of modals there. What would you like to change about your daily routine? Again, here, because it's not real, because you haven't made the changes yet. I guess I should try to get to bed earlier. Here's the modal, should. And get up earlier, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, here, when he's talking about his routine, he's going back to the present tense. I play computer games late at night. Computer games late at night sometimes. I should focus on other things. 
And as I told you, I wish I had more time to exercise on a weekly basis. If you are going to refer back to things you've already said, why not say something like, and as I told you, or and as I mentioned. That kind of shows that you are referring back to what you said before, and that you're not just repeating what you said before. On a weekly basis. I would love to try new sports, like rock climbing, for example. As a high school student... Whoa, okay, now this answer is beginning to drag a bit. There isn't much I could do to change my daily routine. I just wish I didn't have so much homework all the time, so that I would have more time to enjoy myself. Uh, I didn't have so much homework all the time. Okay, there's nothing too spectacular there. All right, let's move on to the second sample. That last answer was just a little bit too long. What is your hobby? I don't know why the question is not what are your hobbies. Why is it singular? Well, as for me, I'm... This is not the right discourse marker to use. Because the question specifically asks about you. As for me, is when you are discussing different things. And then when you get to a particular topic or a particular aspect, you say, well, as for this noun. But here, there's only one thing under discussion. So this does not make any sense. Well, as for me, I'm really into outdoor activities. First reason why I'm so the first reason the first reason fond of outdoor activities is that it's a great way to release my pressure and give myself a break. <sighs> this guy always sounds like he's drunk. Um, okay, it's a great way to release pressure. There's no my. It's a great way to relieve to release pressure. In addition to this, I guess it's probably because I feel comfortable and peaceful. Feet. I feel. Let's get that right. I feel comfortable and peaceful in the wild. Because I feel comfortable and peaceful in the wild. I guess wild is not a bad word to use. Uh, if you look at the structure, he puts the answer here. He says outdoor activities. And then he gives reasons uh, first, in addition break. In addition to this, I guess it's probably because I feel comfortable and peaceful in the wild. Okay. And then he goes on to examples. For example, if I have got leisure time, I would prefer to go hiking or go for mountain climbing. Why does he talk like this? Okay, let's just talk about the structure again. Okay, so here's the answer. Then he gives us reasons. Then he gives an example, but I'm not sure that this is really an example. He doesn't tell. He doesn't talk about any specific time that he went hiking or anything like that. He uses wood here, um, and he says, "If I have got leisure time." So that means he does not really have leisure time. There's a difference between saying "when I have leisure time" and "if I have got leisure time." When I have leisure time, well, obviously that's just when. So it means it's real. But here he's using if and would, so it means it's not real. Not using modals accurately there. Did you have other hobbies when you were younger? Just one thing, it says younger. It doesn't mean you have to be a child. They just say younger, younger than now. Anyway, he chooses to talk about when he was a kid, and oh, that's fine. For sure, I can vividly remember. Okay, vividly and remember go together pretty well, or clearly remember, you can also say that. When I was young, I was keen on watching cartoons. Watching cartoons, is that a hobby for kids? I'm not sure, but it's okay, you can talk about that. Well, in addition to this, I was also into playing games like hide and seek as well as playing house. Why does he slur his words so much? But anyway, he has the vocabulary to talk about some specific hobbies. I don't know if playing hide and seek, is that a hobby? Playing house, these are just games. These are not hobbies. You know, the hobbies when I was younger bear no relation to the hobbies today. Frankly speaking, I particularly prefer childhood hobbies. 
can. He slurred his words so much here that I couldn't even make out what this is. What is he saying? Particularly with her childhood hobby. How old? I don't know what he's saying. Uh, there's some good language here, even though I don't know that these are actually hobbies. But he does say the hobbies... Oh, I was going to say it's good language, but it's not. Because it should be the hobbies I had or my hobbies from when I was younger. I was going to say the bear no relation. This is good language, but he messed this up. Because you can't say the hobbies when I was younger. The hobbies I had when I was younger bear no relation to my hobbies today my hobbies today and then he uses frankly speaking here i don't know why he's using frankly speaking this is not the right phrase to use because you're not being very direct you're just mentioning something frankly speaking is not the discourse marker to be used here frankly speaking is used when you are going to say something that other people might disagree with or find offensive or find shocking or whatever not this. If you had more free time, what would you do? Here we see the same grammar again. If, had, and would. Supposing that I had more free time, I would love to read a book or go traveling. Okay, so instead of saying if I had more time, he says supposing that I had more free time. Nice way to switch up the language. Read a book or go traveling. What I'm trying to say is that it's the best way to enjoy myself and I can get relaxed. Okay. Uh, not sure why he says what I'm trying to say because that was not confusing, but okay. Uh, it's the best way to enjoy myself, okay, and relax. Not to get relaxed. It's the best way to enjoy myself and relax. Use relax as a verb. Here, enjoy is the verb. Make this a verb also. You can't say, and I get relaxed. No. That is the best way to enjoy myself and I can get relaxed. Nope. Furthermore, as long as I had more spare time, I would also enjoy hanging out with my friends or getting together with my family members. What can I say again? Slurred speech. What was the question here? Oh, if you had. F okay. Uh, now he says, as long as I had more free time. Yeah, I guess that's not wrong. To me, this just sounds a little bit weird. I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't say this. I don't think it's wrong, though. Because usually when we say as long as, it's a condition. Like, for example, as long as the weather is good, I might go out. But here, it doesn't sound like he's using it as a condition. So I'm not sure why he's using that. Uh, hanging out with my friends, there's nothing too special there. Great fun to be with them. Fun to be with them. Okay, he's not putting a whole lot of effort into pronunciation here. How do you relax? Personally speaking... Nope. Again, you can say personally speaking if the question is specifically referring to you. Personally speaking is when talk, when you use that when you want to say how you are different from others or how your opinion is different from others. Not when they're asking you just for your opinion. Personally speaking, there are many ways I relax and unwind myself. Okay, unwind is a good word. We've got relax and unwind. Good vocabulary there. Anyway, what I extremely enjoy doing. What I extremely enjoy doing. Extremely and enjoy don't go together. So you can drop the extremely. What I enjoy doing, not extremely enjoy. You can't say that. Swimming for the reason that I forget all of my worries and troubles in the swimming pool. Whenever I feel tired or under. Okay, let's just go back to this here. Uh, for the reason. Instead of saying because, he's saying for the reason. That's not bad. I feel tired or under great pressure. Is this the end of the sentence? I guess it is. 
I forget all of my worries and troubles in the swimming pool whenever I feel tired. <sighs> this last part doesn't make sense. I forget all my worries and troubles in the swimming pool whenever I feel tired or under great pressure. I want to leave this as a separate sentence because if you put this uh, clause here together with this sentence, uh, it doesn't make sense. Let's move on to the next question. How do Chinese people relax? Frankly speaking, it. No, again, this is not the right place to be using frankly speaking. This is not a controversial answer. No. It varies according to people's age, gender, and individual preference. This is good, though. It varies according to noun, noun, noun. Age, gender, preference. This is good grammar. But generally speaking, I guess most of Chinese people are fond of... This is not most of Chinese people. It's most Chinese people. But generally speaking, actually, I think I should put a comma there. Uh, there we go. Let's put a comma there. Generally speaking, I guess most Chinese people. We only use most of when you're talking about a smaller group of people. Like, for example, most of the people I know. Because I don't know everyone, I just know a group of people. But here, Chinese people, it means all Chinese people. So there's no of. Meals together or chatting with each other. The most important reason for this is that we feel relaxed and delighted when chatting with others and it's a kind of Chinese custom. Okay, it's okay. Apart from the slurred speech, not much I can say about that. How do Chinese young people differ from the old in their hobbies? Hmm. I think they are like chalk and cheese. Okay. Uh, this is a good idiom, chalk and cheese. So they're very, very different. I just wish. I just wish he would put some emotion in, into his voice and use some stress for emphasis. I think they're like I think they're like chalk and cheese. Instead, when he talks, he comes across as very, very flat. Young and the old are apparently different in age and lifestyle. Okay, this is kind of a weird place to say apparently. The young and the old are apparently different in age. <laughs> He's saying it appears young people and old people are of different age. Well, that does not make any sense. Why use the word apparently? Of course they are different. Well, as for young people, I believe they're interested in watching movies and playing sports. While in terms of old people... And Here he's using while in terms of incorrectly. While in terms of is used when you have a certain criteria by which you are judging something. Here he's not judging anything. He's just talking about the groups of the group of people. So he should just have said while old people in China, not while in terms of old people in China. While the old people in China, China I probably guess they are keen on dancing in a square or taking care of their grandchildren. Is that a hobby? Taking care of your grandchildren? Not sure. All right, here is sample three. Do you like films? Yes, I enjoy watching films. When I want to relax or have some fun, I like to watch a movie. Now, I've been saying before that a lot of the answers are too long. Whoa, this one is too short. Do you like films? Why not talk about your favorite film or at least your favorite genre? That answer is very short. What kinds of films do you like best? My favorite kinds of films are comedies. I like movies that can make me laugh. Okay, see the problem with these short answers is that the grammar that you use is not going to be complex enough. Look at this. This is a simple sentence. My favorite kinds of films are comedies. I like movies that can make me laugh. So this is the whole answer consisting of two simple sentences. 
That's why you need to expand your answers a little bit. How often do you watch films? If there is an interesting movie playing at the cinema, I'll go to see it. I should put a comma there. Okay, there we go. Uh, well, at least here there's an if sentence, so now the grammar is a little bit more complex. I'll go to see it. It's nice to go out to see a movie with my friend sometimes and get to see it on a big screen. Okay, and here, and to get to see it, to have the opportunity to see it. Do you like to watch films alone or with your friends? Ah, uh, this is a very common question. Do you like to something alone or with your friends? It's not always just watch films. It could be about so many different topics. Or friends. I'd rather watch films with my friends. Okay, she's putting the answer up front. That's good. And now, hopefully, we're going to hear some reasons. We always have a good time together. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, we talk about the movie, whether we enjoyed it or not. Okay. Uh, question is in the present tense, and she uses the present tense to answer it. Always. Have. Talk. Now, here, she's using the past tense because, of course... The movie is finished. They've already seen it. So good, accurate use of tenses there. Do you prefer to watch films in the cinema or at home? I prefer to watch movies at the cinema because then you get to see the movie on a big screen with a better sound system. Sound system? Ugh, I don't know what kind of sound system movies use now. I'm guessing uh, surround sound? If you want to use specific words related to the sound system, it's the Dolby surround sound, right? I think it makes the movie more impressive, you know? Do you like to dance? Okay, moving on to a different hobby now, dance. Yes, I like to dance because I really enjoy moving to the music. <laughs> okay, we see a little bit of stress here on moving. I like moving to the music. But again, if you're going to give such short answers, where is the grammar coming from? You can't get a good score for grammar with this kind of sentence. Is it? What kind of dancing do Chinese people like? Chinese people like to do ballroom dancing, but outside on the street. Young people... Notice the pause here before the but it just adds a little bit of emphasis to the word but sing but outside on the street mm -hmm. young people like to go to discos and dance techno and hip-hop techno and hip-hop are not dances so you can't dance techno these are different genres of music you can dance to techno and to hip-hop Discos don't exist anymore. Discos died in the 1980s, so I don't know why she's using the word disco. The word is club, not disco. Does China have any traditional dances? China has a lot of traditional dances. There mm -hmm. are as many traditional dances in China as there are ethnic minorities. Okay, and again, that's the whole answer. <sighs> Even though I really like this, the second sentence there are as many nouns as there are nouns good grammar and ethnic minorities this great vocabulary but the answer is too short why not give us an example of some of these ethnic traditional dances talk about something like what specific ethnic group in your country has a traditional dance give us some examples is traditional dance still popular today in China? Yes, I think so. Many Chinese young people go to school in order to learn it. It's part of our culture. Okay, I guess here's the alternative answer. No, I don't think so. Nowadays, more people prefer modern music and dancing styles. No comment. What kinds of dancing are popular with young people in China? Mm -hmm. Young people are interested in many forms of dancing here in China. Okay, 
So she starts very broadly, many forms. Hopefully she's going to get into specific forms. We like to go to clubs and dance to hip hop and techno music. But she doesn't. But one thing I do want to point out is here she gets it right. She says dance to hip hop and techno music. Yeah, it must have the two. But the question was, what kinds of dancing? And she didn't talk about any kind of dancing. She just said, people are interested in many forms of dancing. And then she talked about music. This is not, these are not dance styles. These are kinds of music. So she didn't really answer the question. If I was the examiner, I would repeat the question. Do you like to listen to music? Yes, I do. I'll often listen to music on my MP4 when I'm traveling from place to place. A couple of things I don't understand. <clears throat> Number one, actually I do understand this because I've heard a lot of people making the same mistake, but MP4 is a file format. MP4 is not a device, it's a file format. It's a kind of file that you can have on your computer. You can't listen to music on an MP4. The MP4 is the file. Maybe she meant to say MP4 player. MP4 player? But MP4 is video. So I don't know if she means MP3. But anyway, whether it's MP4, or MP3, or whatever, it should be MP4 player. MP4 is the file. The device is the MP4 player. Or when I'm at home relaxing. And she doesn't talk about what kind of music she listens to. Why does she listen to music? I know this, the second question asks about what kind of music it doesn't preclude you from saying in the first answer, what kind of music you listen to. If you mention this answer, then the examiner is just not going to ask you this question. It's not a problem. What kinds of music do you like? I like to listen to love songs. I don't know if this is a kind of music. I don't think so. Pop music, rock music, traditional Chinese music, jazz. This is a terrible answer. Is this how it's going to end? Yep. Don't just list things. The whole answer is one sentence where she just lists things. But the problem is, look at the grammar here. The grammar is just, I like, and then there are a bunch of nouns. That is not complex grammar. That's why you shouldn't just list things. Because, like I just said now, there's no grammar in this answer. What kinds of music are popular in China? Oh boy, is she going to do the same thing now? Everybody has different tastes. But I think love songs and pop music are the most popular kinds of music in China. Okay, she's not. <laughs> okay. And this is a good point. Everyone does have different tastes. Right. Uh, what can I say? There's nothing that stands out here. Older classics. Uh, I guess that's pretty good. Look at this here, how she uses the word pretty with popular. Pretty popular. And I wonder if she put some stress on pretty. Let's listen to this. Older classics from America and Europe are pretty popular here too. Mm -hmm. Rap is also getting to be very popular as well. Actually, I didn't hear that. Older classics from America and Europe are pretty popular here. Okay, the stress was an R. It wasn't on pretty. R, pretty popular. Okay. Well, at least there was stress. I guess it was going to be on pretty, but it wasn't. doesn't matter. She did use stress. Uh, getting to be very popular. All right, let's move on. Have you ever learned to play a musical instrument? Yes, when I was in school. I learned to play the violin, but I don't play it anymore, and I think I've forgotten how. Okay, some good grammar here. Past tense, when I was in school, I learned to play. Present tense, I don't play it anymore. Present perfect tense, I've forgotten. Great mix of tenses. Even though it's a short answer, she fit in a lot of different tenses. Is music an important subject at school in China? Unfortunately, music is not such a popular subject at... And look at how she shows her attitude by using the word unfortunately. That's pretty good. The examiners listen out for words like this. 
that show your attitude towards things. Cool in China. Math and science are much more important in China, although maybe not so popular. And we saw a little bit of stress on not there, although maybe not so popular. Okay, pronunciation is really is good. I shouldn't say very good because she's reading, but it is good. What benefits do children gain by studying music or learning to play a musical instrument? I just want to point out benefits and gain. These two words go together very well. And by learning how to play a musical instrument, children can learn many things. Mm -hmm. They can learn self-discipline, determination, and how to appreciate music better. Is this the end? Yep. Now, she doesn't explain how it helps with self-discipline. I just wish that she had taken one of these, either self-discipline or determination, and just developed it a little bit better. Because one of the score, one of the criteria, rather, for coherence is how well you develop your ideas. She puts these ideas out, but she doesn't develop them at all. So how, how is determination nurtured? How is self-discipline nurtured? She just didn't get into it. Have you ever learned to draw? To tell you the truth, I never really had the time to learn to draw. Mm -hmm. I also really don't have the talent to spend my time drawing. Nothing much I can say about that, except let me spend my time V-I-N-G. That's not bad. Do you draw now? Okay, let's listen to this. Do you draw now? Yes, I sometimes like to draw. Not only is it a good form of relaxation, but I enjoy creating beautiful things. Notice the stress on beautiful there? And using my imagination. Mm -hmm. Even if I can't draw very well, I still enjoy it. And notice here in this last part, she started speaking a little bit faster. Even if I can't draw very well, I still enjoy it. So she did mix up the pace a little bit there. I did like that. What do you think are some of the benefits of drawing for both children and adults? This is not really a typical part one question where they ask you to consider children and adults. This sounds more like a part three question. Both children and adults need to use their creativity. Okay, so when talking about art or drawing in this case, creativity is certainly something that you can keep in mind. That's a useful word to get some ideas going. Drawing teaches people to look at the world differently. Look at the world differently, that's another idea. More carefully and thoroughly. And these adverbs used to describe look, thoroughly especially, that's not a bad word. It helps people relax and have fun. And it gives you a chance to use your imagination. These are all really useful ideas. Like looking at the world through a different lens or differently. Uh, gives you a chance to use your imagination. These are pretty good ideas, I think. Because sometimes when it, it gets to art, it can be difficult to think of things to say. Do you like to take photographs? Yes, I like to take photographs. It's great fun. And then afterwards, you can always have the photos and remember the good times you've had. And then afterwards, you can always have the photos. Okay, I don't have uh, no comments on that. On what occasions do you take photos? Well, usually I take photos when I go out somewhere, to a park or to the beach or to a party. When it's somebody's birthday, spring festival, at graduations or any other important occasion, I take photos. Okay, I don't know. There was some weird edit here with other important occasions. I don't know what happened there. Uh, on what occasions do you take photos? Now, the question is in the present tense because they want to know what you habitually do. And she used the present tense like go somewhere. But then after that, it was just a long list. Okay, I don't need to repeat myself, but think about your grammar. 
want to talk about a specific spring festival or specific graduation where you took photos. Switch to the past tense and then talk about a specific occasion. Even though the question is in the present tense, present tense asking about habits, it doesn't mean that you can't talk about a specific occasion when you did this. What kind of photos do you like to take? Mostly I like to take pictures of nature or of beautiful scenery. Also, I like to take silly pictures with my friends. We always laugh a lot and have a good time. Okay, it's error free but kind of simple. Is photography a popular hobby in China? I think so. When Chinese people go out together, they often take photos of each other or of the places they visit. Again, no examples. Like, what places are particularly popular? What places do people love to take selfies of themselves at? If it doesn't get into that, that answer is a bit short and simple. Again, the grammar is too simple. Do Chinese people like to visit photographic exhibitions? Whoa. You know that I don't really visit photographic exhibitions. Do you know that I know? How would the examiner know this? <laughs> There's a difference between saying, you know, I don't really visit, and you know that I. Well, no, how would they know that? You could say, you know, I don't really like to visit. They're a little hard to find here in China. Mm -hmm. There are some, but the content is really not so interesting. Did she answer the question, do Chinese people, and then she just talked about herself? It's not answering the question. Again, if I were the examiner, I would repeat the question. If you don't answer the question, you're going to get the question asked again. Do you collect anything? <laughs> sure. I have a collection of postcards from different countries. Such as? No. <laughs> okay, again, no examples. Why do you collect those things? I collect those things because they are interesting and rare. I like to go over... These adjectives are not bad. Interesting and rare. I guess interesting is not special. Rare, yeah, yeah. And look at this here. I like to go over my collection. Go over. That's a good phrasal verb to use when talking about collections, I think. A collection and see all the cool things I've got stored away. Stored away. That's another good piece of vocabulary. Is collecting a popular pastime in China? It used to be, but not anymore. Actually, it is a little hard to find things to collect. I find that difficult to believe. It's a little hard to find things to collect. Okay. Anyway, used to... Used to <laughs> talk about things in the past. Now, notice she doesn't say it used to be popular. She just said it used to be, so we can drop the adjective, that's okay. Anymore. Actually, it is a little hard to find... Switching here to the present tense, talking about now. ...things to collect, except for maybe pictures of Chairman Mao on flags or coffee mugs. That's kind of weird. Do a lot of people in China collect things, and what do they collect? Well, didn't she just answer the question? People in China really don't collect too many... Ah, notice the stress on don't. People in China really don't collect too many things. Things. They're pretty busy with the daily run of things. Ah, look at this, the daily run of things. Their everyday lives, doing things every day, business, work. Don't have the time or the resources to collect things. None of them? In the beginning she says, ah... Uh, People in China really don't collect too many things. That might be true, but then what do some people collect? Because surely there must be someone you know who collects something. Talk about the exception. Even if the rule is people don't really collect things, talk about the exception. What do people collect? I'm all the resources to collect things. Hmm. What are the benefits of collecting? Well, people like to collect things mostly as a hobby. Okay, and the benefits of having a hobby are... And hobbies are good to have. 
because they help people to relax and get their minds off their jobs or problems they may have. Okay, so I guess there's just one benefit according to her. Uh, people can relax. Okay, that's a very common thing to say. Get their minds off their jobs or problems. That's, an, that's a, not a bad idea you can use when talking about hobbies. Why do people pursue hobbies? Well, to get their minds off their jobs or problems. Not a bad idea. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful.